Hey everyone, how's it going today? Coach here. I wanted to share with you guys um, something that I was just listening to for the first time. So I listened to, you know, I'm just going through my normal routine on a Friday morning, cleaning the house, getting things, uh, you know, just fresh and clean for the weekend, washing cars, all that good stuff. And um, listening to this uh, motivational video, and it's a mix of just different guys, right? And one of them is Jocko. And I listen to a lot of Jocko stuff all the time. But this one little uh, thing that he said just really grabbed my attention. And he just said, get rid of the shackles. Like you're shackled to certain things and you need to get rid of them. And basically what he means or what he was getting to was, you know, his whole discipline equals freedom thing. Like that's his things on his shirt. That's his phrase. That's his motto you know, discipline equals freedom and getting rid of the shackles is part of that is, um, he was referring to like your health, right? So let's say you're tied to diabetic medication and you got to check your blood pressure and you got to pick your finger and you got to check your blood sugar levels or whatever diabetic people have to do. I don't know. Cause I don't know. I'm not one, but there's a lot of individuals out there that have to do a lot of things that are shackled to these things because their health is poor. Well, how do you get rid of those shackles? Take better care of yourself, exercise, eat healthier, and those things will go away. And I got proof of that because I do have, we're not, um, uh, he's not currently training, but he does train at the school. I see him time to time. Uh, his last name is Dorsey. Great guy. Uh, he's one of my brown belts. And when he first came to me, he really couldn't do any of the bear crawls or any of the warm ups that we did. Um, it was very hard for him. He was overweight. And he came to me one time, was asking me like what I ate and, you know, my routine, all this stuff, like a lot of people do. And I shared it with him and uh, he ended up getting a crock pot, started making his own um, food and uh, preparing meals. He stopped eating out because I asked him like what he ate for lunch every day. It was basically whatever fast food was available, he would eat that. And so over time, in a mat, literally over a, over months though, it wasn't a year or anything like that. It was just it was it was literally months. Um, you know, he started to lose a lot of weight, got in shape, got serious. And he told me one time that he uh, I actually got this on a YouTube video because uh, I did a testimonial with him, and he says. Uh, that the doctor, when he went to see get a checkup, the doctor said that he no longer needed um, his diabetic medication. He took him off the medication. And I was like, well, how much, you know, was, was that? Like, what did that cost you a month? And I'm pretty sure he said it was over a hundred bucks, hundred bucks or a little over a hundred bucks. And, um, you know, that's just money back in his pockets, money for his jujitsu dues, it's money for whatever, you know, savings, whatever you want to put it on but it's not going to diabetic medication. He got rid of the shackles, okay? Um, you know, we as far as like my school goes right now, like there's a lot of individuals that have shackles. Um, and I say that because like, for instance, we're having a seminar tomorrow with Sean Williams in our academy. And for those that don't know who Sean Williams is, he's really well-known guy in the jiu-jitsu community. He commentates for Worlds, IBGF, WNO, ADCC. And anyways, he's gonna be at the school. So, you know, it's a hundred bucks for the seminar. And we have a big academy and I was expecting, you know, a pretty decent turnout. You know, not everyone's gonna be able to make it because, you know, some people got weddings, they got birthday parties, uh, maybe they got to work. But a lot of it was just due to the shackles of not having money, not having a savings, not prioritizing their finances in a way to where they have an extra hundred bucks just sitting in the bank to go invest into their jujitsu. So, you know, those individuals are shackled to uh, their financial problems. And if they were to, uh, you know, get more disciplined with their finances, and have a savings and put things away and do the right things with their money. And I get it, a lot of times parents don't teach you that, school doesn't teach you that, but in this day and age, there's podcasts, there's books, there's 
YouTube videos. I mean, there's so much information out there on how to like get better with your finances and to be broke and poor is, 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 is inexcusable like it doesn't even make sense because there's so much educational tools out there to just do better with your finances and if you're shackled to your finances in a, in a way to where you can't do anything or you always ask to ask how much is it you know or if you're a parent that you can't afford certain things for your kids you know that's inexcusable fix those things you know fix those things because there's tools out there and there's educational per things out there that can help you fix those things. Um, you know, I got guys, you know, where they want to compete, but they can't compete. Not that they're hurt or injured or they're going to be out of town. They just don't have the money uh, in their savings account to spend the $100 or the $120 or whatever it is to go compete. So they're shackled to their broke ways that if they were to fix those broke habits, those poor habits, and became more disciplined, they would have the money. And you can just take this right on down the line with just anything in your life to where like, what are you shackled to? Get rid of the shackles, you know? I mean, a lot of people are shackled to um, a lot of mental stuff, you know? I did a bunch of videos the other day for my team on my daily gratitudes, okay? Uh, I don't have to wait to go to church on Sunday to give thanks and be grateful for all the blessings that I have, <clears throat> you know, one day a week. I do that on a daily basis. When I wake up, I have a routine. I go through my, you know, my hydration process and what I take, my vitamins, my greens, and all the proteins and whatever else. Um, and then I just start giving you know, thanks and gratitude for all the things that I have. And it's not materialistic things, you know, like uh, my house and my cars or watches and jewelry. It's just the simple things around me, you know, like the waterfall that's in my backyard. I have a swimming pool and it has uh, a hot tub and it has water, a waterfall that runs all the time. And going outside in the morning with a cup of coffee and just listening to the water uh, is a, like a, a great way for me to start my day. Like it helps me just get the day going. Like I love that. It's like I can't go to the beach. If I was at the beach, I would get a cup of coffee, get up early in the morning as the sun comes up and I would go hear the the, the waves, you know, crash against the, you know, the, the, the shore, the rocks or whatever. <clears throat> like I like stuff like that. You know, it kind of puts my mind in the, in the right place. Well, I wanted to get a house, which I did about four years ago, with a pool and it had a, the waterfall and it. it's just, it's a, it's a great way for me to start. And then I put palm trees in the backyard. So they're starting to grow new fronds and, and grow and everything. So I'll go back out there and just look at that. And then I'll take my dog for a walk. And as I walk through this neighborhood that I'm in, which I purposely moved into because they have trails and it's really known for the peacocks, um, you know, there's peacocks, especially right now. Like, I have peacocks that actually I just looked at. The eggs are right here outside my window. Uh, you know, one of the peacocks laid her eggs right here. She comes back every now and then, checks her eggs. There's a few of them hatched. So, you know, I'm sure I'm going to see some little baby peacocks out here running around in my front yard somewhere in the street. But they just roam the neighborhood. You know, they're just beautiful birds. Um, you know, as I go through this trail... I come around and at the park, there's this pond and it has like this, you know, whatever water just shooting up in the air and it just runs all the time. There's turtles, there's ducks, there's storks and everything. So well, I'll take my dog and I'll walk out and there's got like a little, uh, like a deck kind of thing. You go out and you just kind of sit there and you can just watch whatever, just it's peaceful. And then we'll continue our walk and then we come on home. So. All these little things throughout the day, you know, I'm grateful for, and it gives me a great way to start my day. It, it, it unshackles my mind from like whatever it is that I'm going through. Like, like maybe I didn't sleep well, or I got something going on with the business, or maybe it's something going on within the family, or maybe I'm carrying some weight from a, a, a problem with what another student is going through. And when I start my day like that with some daily gratitude and listening to the water and, and, and 
uh, appreciating the nature that's around me, um, it unshackles the mind from those things that that uh, maybe might have been kind of weighing heavy on me or whatever. So it helps. The exercising helps. The runs help me. I always feel better. I don't want to run all the time, but when I get done running, I feel a hell of a lot better after I'm done with it. Working out yesterday, you know, it was a little little rough in the beginning. Didn't feel like it, you know, the body sore, it's beat up a little bit from training, but I'm like, I gotta get it in. And then once the blood starts flowing, oxygen's moving through your body, some good deep heavy breaths, you're pushing weight around and you start to feel better. You start to detach from the things that you're dealing with and you're in the moment and you're just doing something healthy for yourself. I'm getting rid of the shackles of certain things that might have been in my way and holding me down to where I wouldn't have been able to like go through my day the way I need to go through my day. Um, so all of that stuff matters. Your finances, your your exercising, the way you eat, um, you know, just how you spend your money, you know, just all these things. What are what is what is holding you down? Like what is weighing on you? What what shackles do you have right now? And what are you going to do about those things so that you can have the freedom to go to a seminar, to go to a tournament, to go on vacation, to buy a nicer car? Some people are shackled to their poor decisions that they made in the past to where they need a nicer vehicle or they need to get their vehicle fixed and they can't get it fixed and they can't get a new one because of poor decision making in the past where they're shackled to that car and they need a new one before it continues to break down on them and continue, they have to continue putting money into something that really they shouldn't be putting money into. Um, I can see her all day because I have a lot of 20 year olds, 20 to 30 year olds, even some 30 to 40 year olds that are really shackled to some poor decision making. And we're all guilty of it, myself included. But like I get up every day with like some type of educational thing that I'm listening to, whether it's the videos and motivational stuff that I'm listening to or something on my business um, or working out or whatever, like whatever I'm not being that good with or I need help with, like I'm trying to get myself unshackled from that thing so that I have the freedom to go and do what I wanna do. And I've been able to do that throughout you know, the years to where I do have the freedom to do the things that I wanna do, have the things that I wanna have, do a seminar that I want to do, um, so on and so forth, because I'm very responsible with my finances, with my health, with the things that I have. I take care of them. I give the example all the time. Like, it's just a natural thing for me to like, as I walk to a parking lot, my parking lot at the school especially is, I'll look left to right and just, you know, naturally just kind of see what people's cars look like on the inside. You know, I'm not like all like this, like looking all, but you know, I'll glance, you know, as I'm walking through, it's just, you know, it doesn't matter where I'm at. It's just, it's, it's wherever. I, I could be driving down the street and see someone with a huge dent in the side of their car, or they got plastic over their window with duct tape. Instead of getting it fixed, they just put some duct tape and plastic around it. You know, I came out of Home Depot, uh, it was actually two weeks ago, Man, I park far away from everyone. It just happens. That's what people do. Well, I come out and there's this push cart, okay, where the like a flatbed, and it's literally leaning on my truck. So I move the flatbed away, and then there's a there's a dent about that big and some orange, because Home Depot the paint on the on the handle was orange, right on my driver's side door. Man, you talk about being hot, you know is what it is, immediately start calling, looking for places to get it fixed. Place right down the street was able to get me in right away. I'm not driving around like that. There's no way in hell I'm driving around with my car looking like a hoopty, all beat up. I mean, I keep my stuff clean inside and out. I had a, gave a student a ride home recently. 
They're like, man, coach, every time I see your car, it looks like you just got done deep, like it just got done being detailed. And it's like, it stays that way. You know, my wife just left for work. I got up and washed her car because I don't want her to drive around on a beautiful, because it's nice out today. It's Friday, it's the weekend. I don't want her driving around in a dirty vehicle. I want it to be clean. You know, I just got done washing my car. So being unshackled from all these things requires a lot of discipline, but it's worth it. I don't want my vehicles to look hit, look beat up is basically what I mean. When I want to sell it, I'll be able to get as much money as I want for it because I take care of those things. I'll give you an example and then I'll let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your weekend. I had a 2009 Pontiac GT G8. They stopped making them. And I was told that I wasn't gonna get 20 grand for that car. It was 10 years old when I sold it. There's no way you're gonna get 20 grand for that car. Well, I had less than 30,000 30, miles on it. I kept it super clean. Some guy in New York sent a flatbed. First he sent like a, like a guy to inspect it, look over it. Gave it a you know clean bill of health. Sent the guy, hey man, it's a great car, should buy it. Sent a flatbed, picked it up, paid me twenty grand, and took the vehicle. All my vehicles are like that. Low mileage, super clean, inside and out, not all beat up, no duct tape anywhere, no scratches, scrapes, stuff hanging off, uh, side mirror hanging off, none of that stuff. So I'm not shackled to that, to any of my vehicles. If I want to get rid of them, I can get rid of them. I own them now. All my vehicles are paid off to where like, I don't owe the bank any money to where like I can sell them, take that money and then go buy a newer one if I want to. I'm not shackled to those cars. So all these examples is going to relate and hit someone somehow. Get, un get rid of the shackles, like this Jocko thing I was listening to. As I was listening to it, I was like, man, it just hit me because I'm just thinking about just the mental Rolodex started just flipping to I'm just thinking about all the individuals that I know that are shackled in some kind of way to diabetic medication, to not being able to go somewhere they want to, or go to a seminar or do a, do a tournament or buy a newer car or whatever. Um, you know, you know, the other day, not the other day, it was a couple weeks ago, but one of my students didn't have, he's a young guy, so I get it, like he's young, so like still, but he didn't have running shoes. And I told him that he needed to, <laughs> he was getting ready for a tournament and he didn't have, uh, I didn't know that he didn't have running shoes. I just take for granted everyone has a pair of sneakers, right? Well, he didn't. And then one day he came in and he was like, um, didn't look, normal like you can just tell something was on his mind like something was off so i'm like hey how's it going like what's this that whatever and he's like oh i'm just sore i'm beat up <laughs> my legs hurt my feet this whatever i'm like from what and he's like well I've, I've been running like you told me to run but i've been running in steel toe boots because that's all i have <clears throat> i was like man okay i got you so i have a what size do you wear Okay, this guy's bigger than me. It's just for whatever reason, of this, the height that I am, I wear a size 11 Nike. I got a, like a brand new pair, basically just dusty sitting underneath the bench in the locker room, in the men's room at my school. I don't use them. I leave them there because if I ever want to run around my complex, I got an extra pair there. I'm just, you know, just being ready. So I just go in there and I say, hey, it has insoles in them too, like the good insoles, you know. Come out, hey man, try these on, like see if they fit, man, fit perfect. He's an 11, I'm an 11, got some new Nike shoes. He runs in them. You know, I check on him about a week later and he's like, man, those things are great. Runs are a lot better, so on and so forth. You guys see what I'm saying? Like, like, just get rid of the shackles, like, or just have yourself in a position to where you can do something like that for someone and it's not going to kill you to just give someone a pair of $100 sneakers that you're not using anyway because you just got them sitting on the side for just in case, you know, you can help someone out. So, yeah, discipline equals freedom, guys. You want to get to where you want to be at, you have to be disciplined. And a lot of people just ride me for that because, well, why are you, why are you so hard about certain things? Why are you like this? Why are you like that? Why are you so serious? Why are you take it that far? because I see the benefits in it, so.
All right, guys, got to go. You guys have a great weekend. I'll catch you on the next one. We'll see you.